First things first, let's start with an experiment. I have here a beaker filled with water and in a moment I'll be dropping a small bit of food coloring in it. As you might expect, it will gradually mix into the water and color it. You're probably thinking, I've seen this before, this is a diffusion experiment. In this video I'll try to convince you that this experiment is not about diffusion at all. I have experiments, theory and simulation lined up to back up my story, so bear with me. If you search online for diffusion experiment demos, like the ones they show in biology classes, you'll find a ton of videos. Problem is, they are all wrong. I'm not saying that they are intentionally lying to us, but they have the facts all wrong. I've been studying diffusion related subjects for a while now, and I decided now could be a good time to try and make things right. So what is diffusion? Suppose we have two boxes, each filled with balls of a different color. Let's say that each ball is allowed to move inside its box in a random direction. If all of them are allowed to move this way, the location of individual balls will vary over time, but their density will not. What will happen if we suddenly connect these two boxes? Well, as your intuition probably tells you, their random motion will make the balls explore new regions of space. If we wait long enough, the blue and the red balls will be distributed evenly across the merged box. So, we started with blue spheres on the left and red spheres on the right, and now the balls are evenly distributed in space. Overall, we had a net flux of blue spheres from left to right and a net flux of red spheres from right to left. There was a flux from regions of high concentration of spheres to regions of lower concentration. This is exactly what happens in diffusion. In the experiments we are interested in, we put a drop of dye somewhere, and since each particle of that substance moves randomly, we see a flux of particles from that region to regions of lower concentration. This is the only type of motion that we call diffusion. Diffusion is due to random motion and so the only type of motion that we expect to see is expansion. No mixing, no currents in the liquid, just slow smearing of the initial distribution over the entire container. But the thing is, since diffusion is a random motion, it turns out to be very very slow, as I'll show you in a bit. However, diffusion demos are pretty short, they all go pretty much like this. They put a drop of food coloring into a beaker filled with water, and after about 5 or 10 minutes, the entire beaker is colored. If this is not due to diffusion, then what's happening here? Well, what happens is that water is evaporating from the top, which cools them. So, we have a region of cool water at the top and warm water at the bottom. Since cold water is slightly denser, it tends to sink. This causes swirls and currents inside the beaker, which mixes the food coloring very fast. Let's look back at our experiment. We can actually see the currents happening in real time. I'll fast forward for a bit just so you don't get bored, but the entire process happens on the scale of minutes. You can clearly see the currents and swirls in the liquid, which is definitely not due to diffusion. I dare you to look at other people's diffusion demos and search for these effects. To have a real diffusion experiment, we need to get rid of flows, and there are several things we can do to make that happen. First, using a test tube helps. Next, we need to make sure that when we inject the dye, it won't cause swirls right from the start. To avoid that, I added salt to the water instead of using just tap water. Salt water is slightly heavier than the dye, so when we inject the dye, it immediately floats to the top. Finally, the entire experiment can be done inside a closet or somewhere with a constant temperature. After a few failed attempts and lessons learned, I was finally able to get everything right. I set the pace of the video so that one second here is equivalent to one hour in real life. I also show here the intensity profile on the test tube. This is a measure for the concentration of the dye at different places as a function of time. Life is 3600 times slower than what we see here. Note that things seem to be changing pretty fast when we started, but now they're barely changing anymore. It's already been over 24 hours and the test tube is far from well mixed. We have no flows or currents and so everything takes a really long time. To be more quantitative about it, let's look at this point I marked on the intensity profiles. See how things are changing pretty rapidly at first but then they slow down? 
The slope of the curve gradually decreases, which is typical for diffusion. We also have a very good physical description for diffusion, the diffusion equation. Solving it shows exactly the same result as in the experiments. Things change rapidly at first and then they slow down. I mean, look at this. I filmed this three weeks after the experiment is started. It's been so long and we definitely see that the dye is diffused, but it is still very far from being well mixed. On the other hand, let's look at the beaker experiment. I filmed this just 20 minutes after I started it and things are pretty much homogeneous at this point. I hope you found this topic as interesting as I do and that you learned a couple of things about diffusion. You can find a ton of details in the code I used for everything in the description below. Thanks for watching.